Hey guys, Mark Farashi, Pro Tech Dog Training, and Dioji. And Dioji has had a long day. He hung out with me all day in a hot trailer. And I'm kind of doing something a little different. I had him running all three of them in the, in the run, right? There's a time you got to start separating them so they start getting some more uh, angst, some more want, because they don't have that social interaction going on that's going to distract them and their dependency on each other, right? So you're trying to take that away. So Dioji. Last night spent the night in the, in the trailer. The night before he filed his run. Last night we did okay. And we're trying to build up on some potty training. He's had some accidents. So we're doing corrections and then taking him outside and reaffirming the positive on the potty training. And that's where we're at now with the OG. But I've got a little harness on him. I want to play with some of the sacks. So we're going to do the same thing we did with, with Diana this morning. We're going to take the OG and... Boy, yep. Good boy, good. That's my boy. Yeah, good boy. That's my boy, good. Now I want you to start to watch and pay attention to my voice tone and my attitude. There's emotion involved here, right? Watching another trainer that does a lot, and he, he ties everything down into his protection work into emotion, and he's right. He's totally right on. Um, it is tied to emotion. The dog is an emotional creature, and if you can channel these emotions, he's talking about. Uh, prey and play and then going to defense and getting the dog to understand their, their drives and the emotional state of mind that they're at. And he, he's totally correct. And I love the fact that he's tied into that because that's what it's all about. It's the same thing that I do. I get a lot of emotion, my voice tone, body language, energy, as Caesar would say, when I'm working a dog. This is what gives me more animation in the animal and having the dog more happy, right? Yeah, good boy. Dioji, good boy, good Dioji. Now we're talking obedience here, but it's all about the state of mind of the animal, right? Whether it's obedience, whether it's protection, you're channeling drives is what they call it when you get into protection. Channeling drive from prey and play to defense, right? You gotta hit these things at the right time period of the dog. If I went and put defense on this little puppy, obviously I'd blow him out of the water. Um, it's not what you wanna do. D.O.G. Good boy. Good. D.O.G. Yep. Come on. Yay. Ha <laughs> ha Good boy. Good. Good boy. Good boy. D.O.G. D.O.G. Good boy. Good. D.O.G. Yep. Good boy. Good. Yay. And then tie it into a crescendo and into a release into that toy and play with them a little while. Good boy. Yay. Good boy. Nope. Nope. See if I can convey the thought I wanted to come over the chair. Good boy, good. Ah, yeah, good boy, good day. Good boy, yeah, good boy. Good boy. <laughs> good boy, D.O.G., good boy. And D.O.G. takes off. Good boy, D.O.G., good boy. And I'm going to throw him another toy that he's not used to seeing. This is uh, a jute roll that they have. They're one of the top canine, police canine kennels uses a lot for their reward and phallicle into um, drug detection or any type of thing. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. And it's got jute, so it's a whole different texture. It's a little heavy, a little dense. It's a perfect play toy to get him something good. Boy, good. That's my boy, good. That's my boy, good. Ready? Good boy, good. Oh, huh. Good boy, good. We gotta do this again. We gotta do it again. We want you to go over, not under. Ready, ready. Ah, good boy, good. Yeah, good boy. Ha, ha. Good boy. I know that's off camera for you guys, but see the pride? See how he's carrying himself? This is what you want to bring out. You want to bring out pride and confidence. So it's it's a lot of what I was talking about this morning with uh, with um, Diana in regards to the bite fundamentals, getting the dog to bite. And that's all the physical aspects, but more of it is the mental aspects. Giving the confidence to the dog, turning it into a game so they can start roughhousing and channel some of those drives into the play and prey with me. It's nothing more than a play toy. They, res they know me. They trust me. Um, all that. So puppy development when you're talking bite work is critical. And then you get to a certain point when the dog's old enough that you start going out and seeing other decoys. And then I turn into the handler. And I'll talk to the decoys and I'll tell them where the dog's at and then I'll let them work the dog with the skill sets that they have. I never want to go out and try to 
dictate the way a decoy works. I want to tell him what I need, and I want to know that the decoy has the right attitude and the right uh, experience and skill level with their experience that they're going to give me what I need in working my animal. I don't go out and just let anybody work my dog. I pick and choose those that I want, depending on what I'm trying to get out of the session, right? And I will usually, because I'm doing personal protection, police dogs, I'm doing more real, I don't do sport, I will work my dogs towards developing in or the Schutzen decoys first. Why? Because they really accent grips and strikes, okay? And that gets the dog to really be confident, and then there's a lot of equipment that's orientated in it, and I'm gonna rely on that high that the dog has towards the equipment. Now, at the same time, keep in mind that when we're doing real protection and we're going through, there's things that I do that I want to accent as far as taking the dog away from equipment and getting the dog into a routine. You saw me do it today with, with um, Diana, where I took that sack and I threw it on the ground. I did that on purpose, whether you realize it or not. It came from habits. I didn't think and realize I was doing it until I watched back the film. And then I realized I'd done it, and it was to get the dog high on that toy, throw it on the ground, the dog's mental attitude's going to go to it. And right away I redirected it towards me. There was another toy involved, there was another bite thing, but I took the dog's attention towards what it wanted and what it expected to be going after and redirected it towards something else. That habit and that behavior can be built where we end up doing it, where we start teaching the dog to pay attention when we do civil agitation to my arms, okay, to my body with no equipment, right? As I build the dog, I will start trying to draw the dog away from equipment and get the dog to understand the concept, conveying a thought, right, to the animal that I want them to give me the attention first and no, they're not allowed to pay attention to that. If they do, I'm going to come in on them and pop them with a whip as they get older and they're able to handle it, obviously. It's not with a puppy. But I'm going to teach the dog that they need to give me a certain amount of energy and give me their attention. And as soon as they do, then I'm going to go over and run over and grab that toy. I'm going to bring in the sleeve and I'm going to give them what they want, right? So they start to learn and be developed in such a way that they say, if I give this guy my attention and give him the aggression first, it's going to be channeled, then he's going to go, to, and they're going to anticipate. Same thing, anticipatory want, right? But it's all about patterns and how you work the animal. Then I'm going to take the dog over after I do the civil and get the dog a little frustrated, a little bit of wanting my skin, my flesh, and then I'll go over and grab that toy and then give them what they want, which is the sleeves, right? They're nothing more than a tool. That's all they are. And then I will get the dog and I'll reset it. That's one of my big things that I do that's different than sport, right? I want to get the dog used to giving me their attention, giving me that aggression, that energy, and then the rule is that then I'll give them the turn. And then we build on time level to give me more and more intent, more and more direct attitude. We get into building that whole concept with the dog to the point where we can walk over equipment. We can do all, I don't want them high on that equipment so much, and so much that that's all they want. And that's kind of a tendency and a problem with Schutzen as far as the sport. They, they do a lot of work with equipment and the dogs get equipment orientated, right? But you have a lot of trainers that know their stuff and they're going to do th certain things within their work that is going to kind of develop the dog away from that a little bit, right? Uh, the good ones know what's going on too, and they, but they don't emphasize it as much as I would in uh, police work or in, in uh, working dogs with real, right? Nope, nope. I want you to jump over and get some muscles. Yeah, over. Good. Nope. Nope. Shh. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Yay. Come on. Nope. Come on. You got it. You got it. All right. The ocean. Is that ready? Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Oh, you didn't see it. You didn't see it. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Get it. Good boy. Good boy, the ocean. Good boy. Come on. Good boy. All right, so we kind of messed up our session because we got you involved, and I stop and I chatter. Same thing happened today with Diana. I watched back that video, and I realized how much she was doing. And you know what I was doing wrong today with Diana? Did you see it? You don't want to let a dog sit there and froth and get chewy, start biting with the front of their mouth and get into that toy and leave them there long enough that they end up creating another behavior with the equipment. We want one behavior. We want a nice big open mouth bite, crunch, and dedicated to that and then we move on. So me yakking at the screen, sitting there talking so much, caused the dog to sit there and I was watching back and she was playing with the toy too much, right? So that was the one thing that I did wrong that I really didn't like about today's session with Diana. So I've got a harness on him, I'm gonna work him in sack work, see how he does. He already shows me that he's gonna bite to the front of the mouth. He lacks a little confidence. 
I had Deanna a, a week or so before. That's one of the reasons he's in the house right now. I'm trying to build bond with the animal and build trust and then get him to have that bond with me. The bond is the key because that bond will give you something with that animal that nothing else will because he starts to sense and feel confident all kinds of things that come with that bond, right? If you don't give him that attention, you don't give him that real true love and, and real affection as far as coming from your heart. I do it because I've been doing it for so many years. A lot of people that get into this and they, they don't realize it, they become a trainer, they don't know how to give of their emotional being. I always say to my people that when they were learning protection, you have to be the best actor possibly. Being able to project emotion to the animal, whatever you need. If it's a correction, boom, right? If it's, if it's um, <coughs> praise and breaking into praise and that emotion that's required, that's what makes me a little better than a lot of trainers. There's, there's some that can do that. I've done it since I've been a child, so because, to, because of that, I learned the emotional side of dog training because I didn't have anybody around me to teach me. I did it on my own. I instinctively felt it, and I put it into my whole working with the animals, my whole being is a part of this animal. That's what makes me a little better at developing the dogs than some other trainers, right? Not saying I'm the best, but that's, that's something that I can give the animals that a lot of trainers don't have. To be able to give their emotion to the animal honestly and have the dog feel this emotion and have that emotional connection as I build the dog is something that I'm proud of myself about because a lot of trainers just don't have that, right? And that's what it really, really takes, you know? So, good boy. Are you a good boy? Yeah, good boy. I don't know if you're on camera or not, but let's go. Come on, let's go. Good boy. Come on, hop, hop. Come on, let's go. Hop. Now he's getting into that little routine we just did. He doesn't know how to get up on the table. Come on, let's go. You ready? Are you ready? Ready? Hop. Yay, come on. Well, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on, hop. No, you got to jump up there. Your muscles aren't that sore, are they? All right, come on, hop, hop. So I blew our session away because I started yakking at the screen. That's why I always tell you guys a lot of times that it uh, takes me away from my ability to work an animal when I sit here yak at the screen because I don't have myself in tune with the animal, right? And that's what it really takes. Good boy, good. Yeah, good boy, good. So we're going to build the bar with DOG. I'm going to go work him in sack work right now and see how he does. And I, I think I'll film it. We'll find out. All right, Mark Farash, Protect Dog Tannin and DOG, signing off for the evening.